my side. Rock your heart, have black as you win the territory. You can choke from the gun smoke. From the other side. I'm from the place that we call a black hole. Lots of talent goes to waste, lots of unmet goals. But not me, I had to get it on my own. Pay dues and loans, so I stood alone. I had dreams conceived from the heart. I do this for the ones who never got their start, never got their part. For the peace of the pie, the taste of success gives me peace of mind. The sun don't shine even with the sunflowers. Every day I took the sweet with the sour. I knew my power and owned my strength. Competence took me to great lust. Cause I'm bold and that comes with age. Take control and blaze my stage. That's something you can't take away. When push meets shove, I make my way. on everybody i'm tone capone i'm the host of waves of the bay which comes on uh saturday nights from 10 until midnight out here in tampa bay on 88.5 fm i'm also the host of ignite the night which is over six years old we provide a, a platform for artists to perform uh, but we've been gone uh, virtual the last four months because of the pandemic and everything but that's still going and uh just pretty much i'm a tampa bay ambassador when it comes to hip-hop and r&b but I am not from Tampa. I've been in Tampa for 14 years. I am originally from a small town in the Midwest, uh, Kansas to be exact, called Junction City. So where I'm from, a lot of my people don't really get a chance to get that shine. So I figured during my downtime, I could work on my interview skills and also shine light on some of the people that uh, are making my hometown and and beyond just a a place to be known. So uh, with that being said, this is book nine. (laughs) Damn, book nine of the Jefferson City Chronicles, and we got one of the OGs uh, sitting on the Zoom meeting with me right now, one of the, the yes, real sir. trailblazers, one of the real path uh, layers when it comes to hip-hop in Junction City, so I want to go ahead and introduce the homie show to the Junction City what up, Chronicles. What up, what up, what up, What's up with you, bro? You know, just living, man, surviving. I see you, yeah, man. How's Denver treating you? Oh, man, Denver's cool, man. You know, I, I definitely miss home. Being uh, uh, up here, you know, it's, it's different. But uh, I like the mountains, man. I like fitness. So I'm man, loving Denver it. is one place I never went to, even though we were, like, right there. Like, I'm, like the furthest west I ever got was Hayes. And what? after Hayes, I was just like, man, I'm good. So I wish I would have went to Denver, though, man. Wait, like, wait, you've never like been Trump. to Denver? Never. Damn. Never. I, love I can't it, wait till I, I get it. up there because I know I'm going to link with y'all. And I know I got some other people. Uh, from KC that's out there right now, too. It's just a matter of getting out there, man. But I've never been to Denver, bro. Right now, I might hold off on that. But in the future? <laughs> man, I'm down in Florida right now. You ain't telling me nothing right now. Oh, actually, was- if I was you, I would actually come here. Yeah, it's safer out there. <laughs> It'd be like nine, ten thousand 10,000 cases of Rona every yeah, day man. on this piece, though. Man, that's ridiculous, yo. And people think it's a game, man. Until until people someone do talks think to it's them. a game, man. My auntie just got over it. Man. You know what I'm saying? Now, my wife's several. aunt and uncle just got over it. Man. So it's like right there. Yeah, I got coworkers, I got nieces, I I mean homies that I rhyme with, close friends. I know tons of people, man. So it's real. Very, very real, man. But I'm gonna uh I'm actually gonna stray from how I usually do these interviews. I'm gonna yep. play a song of yours to begin with. Uh, because this track, I'm not. I'm gonna have you introduce this one right here. I'm gonna play Mona Lisa because I think that's gonna be a, a fitting way for them to understand who I'm talking to. It's just a good way to set this whole interview up. So introduce oh, that track for me, bro. Uh, Mona Lisa is the first track on my album or EP title, "Looking Down at the Sky," and it's basically just basically about uh, creating a masterpiece and what makes a masterpiece. You know what I mean? Basically, it ain't the artist. It's, it's the people. Straight up, straight up. So, yeah, man, this is what it is. Mona Let's Lisa. get into it then, man. We're going to switch it up. We're going to play some music to begin with. That way you know who I'm talking with. 
and then we're going to get back into it in just a moment. Let's get it. I think I just wrote the Mona Lisa. Feel like I'm writing all her facial features. I think I just wrote the Mona Lisa. Feel like I'm writing all her facial features. Like I'm writing a masterpiece, smiling back at me. Said I was at least top five. I think you laughed at me. Thought about knocking them out. Decided to attack the beat and put that energy into writing another masterpiece. There ain't no limit, and I ain't Master P. Mystical neither. But I shock you when I'm beating the beat up. It come naturally. I write and I think up words to link up. I put it on paper and then I speak up. Keep up. Somebody told me that I was great. Now I believe it. I'm just hoping they don't mistake my confidence for conceited. I walk like I know that I am protected by Jesus. He paid me a visit, I was barely a fetus He taught me how to rap before I was even completed Nine months later, I'm here, you can't beat it Flow part to sea, lead you up out of Egypt At that point you realize you are not even equipped I told him, I'm Leonardo with the canvas I write it with a brush, and painting be my advantage I paint it with a pen, and writing it right-handed So the image I create, I'm hoping you understand it I'm an artist, so painting the picture, it be my talent With my imagination, believe in me, I can manage Self-explanatory Whenever my ship landed, then I have a slight advantage and I am not from the planet See, I don't know the proper etiquette to choose the first My apologies, I'm sorry, but I'm new to earth See, I don't know the proper etiquette to choose a verse My apologies, I'm sorry, but I'm new to earth That was Mona Lisa by show and just listening to the bars, listening to the delivery, like everything's ironed out. And, you know, me being an artist from way back, that doesn't come overnight. man. So let's talk about like the whole, the whole, the whole trip. Like how did you get to be in Denver spitting crazy bars coming out of the Junction City, man? Oh, man. So first off, I was a military brat. So I, I grew up in Europe. Okay. And uh, I was in France. When did you right? actually get to JC? I got to JC in 91, 92, 90, like basically into 91, into 92. Before okay. that, I was in uh, Germany. Frankfurt, man, which is like, I mean, it's like New York in Germany. Man. And hip hop was huge there. So I basically got started from, other than local cats that really influenced me, I mean, I mean, there's old school cats like, I mean, D-Nice, Poor Righteous Teachers, Special Ed, DJ Quick. You know what I'm saying? Those are guys that influenced me, man. So I, I started rhyming, I mean, 89. I did my first dare rap in school. <laughs> and <laughs> did my first performance, man. And, and I was hooked ever since, man. And I've been putting it down on a piece of paper forever. That and, explains uh, a lot. That explains a lot because you, you seem to be a lot more polished than, than most folks. I mean, I take, I mean, I work at it though. You know what I'm saying? It's, I write rhyme after, I got garbage bags full of rhymes, bro. No joke. Like, I will never use. Just like a, a basketball player goes and shoots free throws and practices, man, I, I do that with my lyrics. I write rhymes and just put them to the side, never use them. Just to keep your skills sharp. You know what I'm saying? You got to right. work at it. And I focus on every word, you know what I'm saying? It ain't it ain't bar for bar, it's word for word. Everything's gotta flow perfect, you know what I mean? I'm pretty uh pretty meticulous and detailed meticulous, with it the straight up. <laughs> so is that your writing process too or, or what? Like how do you know yeah. you actually got something you're gonna go with? You know, I I don't really have a process, man. You know, I get a beat, I listen to it, and it's crazy because it's like everything's already there. You know, the cadence is there, the rhythm is there, the feeling is there. And I normally come up with a cadence, man, and the rhythm and the words are just there. It's crazy, man. Like it just, feeling it just the blank out, type shit. Yeah, I don't, I don't do first, second drafts. When I write, I write. And that's whatever sound there is, is what came out. And that's it, you know. My process is just to start writing. I don't know what's going to happen or what it's going to sound like. Normally, the beat's telling the story already. You know, mm -hmm. the beat already carries that emotion and feeling with it. I just got to fill in the blanks. You know what I mean? So, I mean, that's what I do. That's crazy. I, I've never don't, heard of Don't that overthink before, it. That's crazy, yo. <laughs> right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? 
But nah, that, that's crazy, though, because I've never heard of somebody write like that before. Like, whatever is on this paper is whatever it is. That's what and it is. Just, it's already and then it's on to the next. Here. And then it's, it's on to the man. next. Just pour, it's like freestyling on paper, basically. Straight up. Right. Straight up. Sometimes I don't even read the rap till it's done, you know? I'm like, dang. Got to go back right. and change some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Take a breath here and there, you know? Read it in the morning, like, damn, I wrote that shit? Like, oh, yeah. Okay, okay. And then sometimes it's like, I wrote that? That's terrible. <laughs> It'd be like that sometimes, man. <laughs> sometimes, man. When you listen to your like your 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 first songs, like the beginning tracks, and then listen to it now, like do you feel that same way? Like about uh, like I can't believe I put this out, or do you still stand strong on the on the words? Oh yeah, I, I stand strong. I'm 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 overconfident when it comes to rhyming, man. I'm I'm once I put it out there, it's out there. You know, um, sometimes I'll listen and and I hear little little parts where I could have took a breath somewhere else and, and little things that I pick apart in it, but most people... That nobody know. else would even hear but you. Yep. 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 But once I write It'd it, man, like it's that. out there. So where did that confidence in, in your in your artistry come from? Man, I think it just came from knowing how much time I put in, man. Like, I've been... I've, been, I've written thousands of rhymes. You know, joke. You know what I'm saying? And the era I grew up in and then, you know hearing it from different people a lot, you know, that kind of boosts your confidence too. And then I, I used to do a lot of battle raps and <laughs> real freestyling though. I ain't talk about, you know, not this new age, week, write it down to write a rhyme about somebody. Mm -hmm. I can go pick through your Facebook and Instagram and figure I'm talking about on the spot MC and, you know, and I do that better than I write most times, you know what I'm saying? So most people don't even believe it's, it's freestyling, you know, but it is. <laughs> Let me commend you on that, because that's one field I cannot even try to get in, man. My skin is not thick enough to get to battle rap. I'll be trying to smack people, and as soon as they talk about my daughter or my wife, oh, my mama, it's going to be It's no hold bar. It really is, if, man. There's, there's a if lot I of battle, battle to where I get a month to write about you, and I get to go search through your life and history. You heard somebody's life. Hey, you're going you to kill all the way me, down. bro. You're going to want to shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not holding back. Cause I'm trying to win. Yeah, battle rap down here is pretty huge, man. Like down in Tampa, we probably have three or four different battle rap leagues. I say, really? So, yeah, it's it's really big out here, man. There's some heavy hitters, and then there's some people that's you know getting their feet wet. But uh, yep. it's pretty. It's a pretty big market down here. But I, I, I respect everybody that's in it because I know I cannot do that shit. Not man. Hey, man. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> yeah. Well, what is it about battle rapping that uh that kind of helps you build for like the, the real career i think it's having thick skin for one because you're gonna mm -hmm. have to have thick skin to get in there and i think it just it preps you man for for putting them bars out you know what i mean and i mean i love battle rapping at heart but i, I mean i like storytelling i like all forms of hip-hop you know what i'm saying whether you got melodies in it whether you battle rapping whether you telling the story current events whatever i try to add variety man you know, I don't, I don't want to be like a, a one-sided rapper and just talk about one thing all the time. Like when you listen to my, my project, I don't want you to be able to pinpoint like my style or, or where I'm coming from or gauge, you know, where I'm coming from. I want it to sound like everything. And that's a, that's a, that reflects on you as an artist, man, because doing the easy stuff isn't challenging. You know nah, what I'm man. saying? So like having a whole viewpoint of of your life as a whole 360 that that's something that a lot of people can't do it a lot of people can't do that a lot of people can't rap without cussing either you know like two little things that's true that actually can go a long way you know what i'm saying so it, well, is it that they can't or they don't want to you know what i'm saying because you can. can some people can't i mean yeah i can't like, never do it so do it, though, i don't like, believe in that word <laughs> right i'd be like what yeah, yeah. Man, act, like your, act like your kid is right there or something, man. Just write. Yeah, I don't even think about stuff like that, man. I just write. I got a lot to say, so mm -hmm. I, don't, I got a lot of words. I don't have to cuss. I can get the same point across. And don't get me wrong. Sometimes I do put a word in there because it's needed. Sometimes you got to cuss in this motherfucker. Sometimes you, gotta, you like, got to. But for the most part, man, I just write, and then I look at it like, dang, I didn't say a cuss word at all. So that's straight up, man. Uh, I know you're out there in Denver, and uh. Yeah, man, man, let me rewind this right quick, man. Since you're coming from Frankfurt to begin with, in 91, 92, explain to me, like, what your view of Junction City was at that time. When well, I know first that had to came? Be like, 
Yeah, that had to be like an eye opener for you. 91, 92, like. You, you guys got there for the flood, huh? 93, I think, was the flood. Yeah, we got there before for that. the flood. But man, when I was in Europe, you know, we, we stayed on, it was a, it was, we didn't stay on base, but the housing we stayed in was all, all Americans that were in the military. And they would always talk about Kansas. Like, dude, this country, farms, Wizard of Oz. Everybody had to come and, through here. Yeah. My, my dad had a choice of Hawaii and Kansas, and they sent them to Kansas, and we were hurt. And my, my first, when I first got here, my dad was, we was in Fort Riley. So I went to Fort Riley Middle for like, maybe like three months and got to meet people there. And then when I got there, they was like, oh, are you going to Junction? Like, bro, it's crazy. Gangs, <laughs> skinheads, blacks fighting. I'm like, in Kansas? Are you serious? Yeah. And then I moved to Junction and was like, bro, I don't know where this town came from in the middle <laughs> of nowhere or how it's like this real. But, man, it was eye-opening, man. Like, out of all the places I can move to in Kansas, I, I'm here. You know, and, and Junction gets love everywhere, man. Everywhere I move, people know where it's at. That's just wild, bro. It That's is just crazy. Wild. Because I – and let me, let me put it out there like this, man. I'm actually from J.C. Like, my parents met – uh, like my dad was in the military, so he met my mom in JC, and I'm, I'm authentic JC, native jungle. So I know exactly what you're talking about at that moment, man. Like we had just had a, a, a gunshot, uh, somebody got shot in the, in, the, in the high school in left room right around oh, that time. That's the reason yep. why we have uh, metal detectors and all that stuff. The gangs was heavy, man. Uh, I'm telling all you, of it, that, man. And we had it was like Temptations Club. That, remember that club? Remember, oh, yeah. remember uh, oh, yeah. Red Lantern? Oh yeah. Sixth Street, Washington, all that stuff, man. It was it was live when I first got. Grand there. Avenue was popping. Oh man, everything was popping. It was different. You know what I'm saying? You can walk up and down Sixth Street and run into everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you know, it was just it was different, man. I go back now and, and I was over there in Westwood, man. We used to just kick it off in the wood and, and get oh. it in, and then end up over there at 12th Street and. That was Westwood. our little area right there, man. We just used to get it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Had a lot of homies in Westwood, so I spent yeah, a lot man. of time there. <laughs> now, I know you just got back from JC. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about it right now? You know, I don't when I go back, man, I'm normally with my parents, man. I don't even I don't even step out. I think it's growing. Did you get to, dr to drive around at all? Oh yeah, what? yeah, I do that. It's it's growing okay. for sure, man. It's a lot of stuff happening there, man. It's a lot of new streets, new buildings, new housing areas. It's it's growing, man. I would you gotta use GPS that. out there right now, man. I was out there uh, visiting one of my peoples, and she was like, "Yeah, I live on this street." What? <laughs> what the fuck is that? Where hey, is you that? know, crazy. I took a street when I was there that I've never driven on, which was blew my mind because my parents they they uh they live in that new area uh, across the Spring Valley area. And gotcha. uh, there's a street that runs along the, the you know, where the meatpacking plant is off of uh, yes. 77. Yes. Yo, there's a street, <laughs> a back street that I have never taken. I took it on accident because the, the road was closed. And I was like, man, and I've never taken this street in my entire life. <laughs> I was like that? that. They're about to move to new know. high school way the hell out there, man. I heard, man. Yeah. I heard. Which, I mean, the, the school looks nice. But just being way the hell out there, like, that's going to cut people walking to school and all that out the oh, equation man. right there. Plus, man, that's so many memories in that school, bro. Yeah. That's it. Man. I don't know. I haven't even been up in that school since I graduated, so I have no idea nope. what it's looking like now. But I know mm -hmm, that man. I graduated from that school. My mama graduated from that school. My auntie graduated from that school. Man. And my other auntie graduated from the same damn building. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So it's probably about that damn time, you know? <laughs> yeah, true. I'm pretty sure it needs to be updated. <laughs> yeah, for real, man. <laughs> Dude, I know that. So when you moved to JC, where were y'all staying at? Uh, off of uh, Christina. It's okay. like South Jackson, real close to the highway. Got you, got you. Yep. Got you. Yeah, man, it's a it's a crazy thing. Like every time I drive in town now, it's just like I go on Grand Avenue because there's nothing on Grand Avenue now, oh, and man. it's like it's buildings that used to be open that closed when I was in high school are still yeah. closed with the same name on the building and everything. <laughs> like nothing has happened 
at all, man. It's like down here in Tampa, like you can't even go like a couple of weeks without something being closed and stripped and and put something else knocked down. Water, you know, like yeah. So yeah, I, just I, don't know I just I don't know. I can't really stand it about that, man. Like I don't understand it. Potholes are crazy. It's like where's oh, all man. this money going? Oh, I know where it's going. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> I'm sure you do, man. So, this is uh this is book nine of the Junction City Chronicles. I'm talking to show uh one of the greats out of the town, man. Uh coming representing JC at that time, like what were some of the, the obstacles that you had to overcome in order to get your music out there? Oh man, being from Junction, the middle of Kansas, automatically people are already like you rhyme. That's why most times when I introduce myself, I, I don't ever mention that I rhyme. I don't say none of that. Mm -hmm. I just let you hear my music eventually one day because they're going to automatically be like, Kansas? But man, Junction, Topeka, Wichita, man, Spitters, man. Kansas City, definitely. But uh, I just had to like prove myself, basically let them hear it and let it speak for itself. Because hearing from Kansas, I mean, people are going to be like, nah, man, ain't no MC. Already. Already. There's black people in Kansas? That's the first question. <laughs> yeah, and and Junction got some MCs for real. You know what I yeah. mean? Like for real. You was leading the pack, though, man. Like a lot of stuff didn't happen until you came around, bro. Like you had to you had to get out there and, and get active for people to see that it could be done. You know, and, yeah, and that's why, like, even now, like everybody that almost everybody I've talked to, at least the people that's from JC, uh, always show you love, though. Like all always show you love. And then the people that ain't from JC, they're starting to get to know you and, and understand who you are as a person. So, I appreciate that, man. That's love, man, for sure. And I, I mean, it wasn't just me, though, man. I mean, I had a crew that I rhymed with back then. I had my brother, Just mm -hmm. Listen, my, my, my other MC that rhymed with me, Kane. We had a group back in the days, X marks the spot. And we started way back when there was, there was no rhymers besides, like, you know, older cats like uh, James Givens, Diamond. Them right. cats, Rat Rat, Boogie, I don't know right. all them cats, but man, James Givens back in the day, I, yo, I gotta give him credit for like influencing me to start freestyling more because that dude back in the days, man, him and Diamond, both of them. Diamond's cats, another, man. another next level beast right there. Yeah, man, them cats was them cats was nice, man. Definitely influenced me to to, to step my freestyle game up. X marks the spot, man. Shit. X marks the spot. <laughs> Not a lot of people know about that. <laughs> That's that old school right there, man. Oh, man. Throwback. How does, uh, do you prefer, like, working in a group setting or, like, solo? Man, that's a good question. I've seen you, I've seen you flip it both ways, man. You know, I like, I like being in a group that is, is less work as far as rhyming, but then it's hard to keep people on the same topic you know you got a song that's got a certain like topic you're trying to stick to it's hard to get everybody to get to that because a lot of people can't like put words together and articulate like different like like uh things going on in the right. song you know we got a song about you know you know black pride you know i don't want no one coming in there talking about selling dope <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> it's hard to get right. that on the same page man and being a solo artist i mean it's all you you know what I mean? Everything. You don't have to worry about trying to, to get your idea and what you're seeing and vision into to their head. You know what I'm saying? You just put it all on paper and it's done. And I got a lot to say, man. So I like, I like both. I like performing with groups. It's a lot more energy. You don't have that to worry energy. about you know, yeah. too much. You know, when you're by yourself, man, it's, it's you. <laughs> yeah. If you ain't got a live DJ, <laughs> it's you. <laughs> Man, hold you up now. You the you one of the first people I've heard actually show love to the DJ in this interview right now. So let's talk what? about the DJ while you Man. say that. Cause let me shout out my DJ Spaceship because trust me, I know uh, I've been I've been ingrained to show love to every DJ I run across. Look, because man, of mine. what what am I without the DJ? <laughs> Even if I don't, I don't know. know him, and he's spinning my my joints. You know what I'm saying? Like what am, what am, I'm a cappella without him. You know, he is a vital part. Not. Not just him, the engineers engineering your tracks, they get no love, man. People don't show up. You know, and you Never. ain't gonna sound like you sound unless it's the engineers. So big up to my man Jazz at 64111 in Kansas City, because that man is nice on the yeah. engineer, man. Yeah, my boy Conductor, he is a monster below they, all these cats, man. They they nice with the engineering, man. And 
I ain't gonna sound like I sound without them. So you gotta give it up. You gotta understand, man. And and sometimes you gotta invest on top of that because um, you can have the dopest lyrics in the world, but if you have shitty mixing and mastering, oh man, or bro. you recorded it on a terrible mic and you can't get your point across, or it doesn't pop. No, nope. because there's a difference in hearing music and hearing music pop, and that's what oh, the man. engineers do. You know, it's a process. It is. You know what I'm saying? There's there's writing the song, getting the song recorded, there's mixing it, there's mastering it. I'm talking about full mixes, like, you know, stems handed and stems every, and everything. Every yes. sound mixed down, you know, there, there's a process. You can't skip one step, man, because it don't turn out right. Right. It's like baking a cake, man. You need you need all the ingredients, man. What you gonna do? Skip nope, don't put no eggs in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Nowadays, we got some vegans and all that. Sure oh, you're right. You it. are right. That's not fake. We call that ache or fake. <laughs> this <That's> guy. <laughs> no doubt, nah, man. I feel you completely, though, man. It's like it's it's a uh, for people that's just taking it like as a hobby. They don't understand like there are levels to this. And oh man, there's there's a whole blueprint that you need to go through to complete a project and if no you doubt. skip a step you can have a dope ass song and have a terrible artwork on your on your oh, project man. and no, i'm not, not even gonna check it. for it uh, no doubt at all or it could be terrible recording it's like man if this was mixed right there's been some songs i wanted to play on the radio that i just can't because as soon as it comes on it's just like I'm telling you. like like nah man like you paid for this <laughs> No, no so doubt. Get your money How back. serious do you take your craft if that's what you're gonna put out there? And that's really what it is, man. See, yep. any any young artists out there, these are gems right now. So just take this from what we're saying, because you know you got two uh, two established cats that's dropping jewels for you right now. Oh take man, that, yeah. Take that to heart, right there. Definitely. Trust the so process. How old were you? Uh, how old were you when you wrote your first song? Uh, ten. My first was song was Dare Rap. My first song okay. was a dare rap I performed at school with Miss with Mr. McGruff on stage with me. <laughs> you got the video? Oh no, nah, man! I look back, man. Uh, what are you doing? And yo, we did this skit, man. It was terrible. It was like a dope <laughs> dealing skit that me and my homie did. Yo, I'm telling you, the teachers had to be like, "Where are these kids learning this?" <laughs> I mean, it was terrible. McGruff man, probably like, "Oh that. shit, here we go." Bro, I'm glad that ain't on tape. I am glad. <laughs> somebody got that, bro. I promise. Oh, somebody do. Somebody Somewhere. Has that. They were like, yo, look at that. He has a whole quarter key of Coke with him. <laughs> I had a, had a bag of flour, bro. It was, <laughs> oh, it was terrible, man. It was terrible. Hell no. <laughs> that was bad, man. We did a transaction on stage. Anybody need this? Oh. <laughs> Dude sat there and did the drugs on. Oh, bro, it was uh, terrible. Ten. We gotta find that tape. Somebody <laughs> has that tape, man. Somebody in Fort Riley Middle School during that uh, time's parents has that tape stuck away somewhere. I need to oh, see man, that. Oh man, it was crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> that is wild, man. Uh, when you were in JC, did you have a favorite place you used to like to take people to? Back in the days. Back in the days. Yeah. Man, back then, I mean, we'd always we'd always hit Aggieville up, man. We'd go to Manhattan and, and terrorize out there. And then there yeah, were certain spots Aggieville. in JC that we'd go to. Milford, the lake, Thunderbird. Man, we should be out there kicking it tough in the yeah. summers. Man. And then uh, for the fourth, yeah, man, the lake, when they used to have a sundown salute at the lake. Sundown. Shoot all the fireworks off the water. Man. That's shit. You so can even get out now there. Too. It's dope where it's at now, too, but. The lake was real dope, man. Yeah. I remember them days trying to get from the town to the lake and traffic all the way backed up. And oh, especially when it's over. Yeah. I remember I them days. But it was a good time, though, man, especially way back was. when. I got a lot of memories in Junction, man. Junction, I, I, you know, I can't, I can't say nothing too negative, man, growing up there. It was the first place I lived where I was stationary, you know what I'm saying? that I would consider home because we bounced around every two to three years, you know, yeah. over over Europe, though. You know, we was moving all over there. Where's your family originally from? South Carolina. South Carolina? Okay. Yep. Conway, Myrtle Beach, Bucksport. 
Gotcha. Yeah, that's where my gotcha. sister at now, man. My parents moving back yeah. there shortly. Are they really? Yup. I mean, my whole family from there. My mom and dad, both sides from the same small town. So, there ain't much in JC keeping people there right now, man. Honestly, nah, honestly, man. I know my mom is is looking to to move at some point, hopefully, but she's still back there taking care of my grandpa. So, um, yep. Later is better than sooner in that situation, but uh, yeah, I know when she moves, I, I don't know when the next time I'm gonna be back in JC is gonna be. Bro, man, I still got homies and their parents there that I would definitely go see. So mm-hmm. I can see myself popping back up even when my parents ain't there, just because that's that's home, man. Yeah, it definitely is, man. What's your favorite place to eat in the junk? My favorite place to eat in the junk nowadays, or back then it was it would be Pusan back in the day. I haven't had it in so long. Though. Did you get it when and you were back? Nope. I didn't because my mom was cooking. My mama's cooking is my favorite, bro. Don't nothing. Nah, nothing I mean, that's above cool, me. but you can, you can grab that on the way out, though. Uh, I, there's nothing above mama's cooking. So and when I go back, that's my favorite place to eat <laughs> as of now. <laughs> I know she's I trying to feed you, too. Huh? I know she's trying to feed you and fatten you up right oh, now, man. too. Definitely. She does. She throw down. <laughs> what's, your, what's, your, what's your favorite, uh, your, your favorite meal from your mom? Man, this is going to sound funny because most people don't like it, but, like, she make this brown rice and, like, lima beans, but it ain't like lima beans like you think. It's like it's like a sweet lima bean, man, and uh, the dressing and cornbread. You know, fixings, man. <laughs> well, you look like you hungry right now. <laughs> I could always eat. I just, I just hit a nerve up in this piece, man. I see could it. could always eat, man. <laughs> Nah, man, I love it, man. I, I miss my mom's cooking, too, man. I, I miss the people back home, too, man. When the last time you've been back? The last time I went back was last year for the 4th, man, when we did the the show out there. That was the last time I've been back before oh, then. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was yeah, probably about three around. years before then, so. But, uh, yeah. yeah, man. Last year was off the chain, bro. Like, I wish you could have got out there. It. That shit would have been next level. But uh, I heard it was the, dope, man. I wish. VFW wasn't ready for us, bro. They wasn't ready for us at all. They thought we was playing around or or that we had some other options going on the 4th of July weekend, but all of the town showed up for, for the independent. I heard it, man. Yeah, it was a I, beautiful I miss thing, performing, bro. bro. I do. Do you? Man, this, this corona. Yeah. You haven't tried to perform virtually or nothing? No, not yet, but we're working on something. When we put this yeah. project out, we're working on a little, like, release virtual release type thing so you gotta do it man you gotta stay sharp with that too man like i can imagine like i've been more of a host than a performer probably for a good three four years now so man me getting on stage right now i couldn't even imagine it but everybody's rusty right now you know what i'm saying like i would agree with that yeah that's why i keep that cardio up so i can run around when i do (laughs) hey that's another jewel right there people think you can go around smoking and drinking all day and be able to hop on stage and handle work no man that's a whole nother aspect it's the same way these nba players or or nfl players out there training yeah you gotta train you gotta train and unless you unless you rap over your vocals and i don't do that (laughs) i don't do that why don't you do that because I'm in a different headspace when I'm performing, and if I want to freak my verse, and like if if I'm rapping over my vocals, I'm kind of like like stuck. You're restricted to that your pattern. vocals. Yeah. Yes, and and if, if I'm not, I mean, I can I can take a breath here, I can pause here, I can I can do whatever I want because it's a Talk show. Shit. I can Get do whatever I want to do, man. Yeah. And maybe I don't want to do my whole verse. Maybe I want to like start freestyling in it because I'm open and hype, and I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen, and. I uh I don't need to rap over my vocals, man. My wind is good. I'll run across stage doing whatever I want, you know. I can project. That's one of the things I cannot stand, like, and and I feel like I've had to do it plenty of times. You know, I'm not gonna front like I haven't done it before. Oh, but I every have. time I feel like I've had to perform over my vocals, I feel like I've kind of let the crowd down because I've had to do it that way. Yeah, you know, I'm hitting everything, everything you know, how it's yeah. supposed to be. But that's another that's a crush for people that ain't prepared though, because if you're and my DJ exploits them so hard, like. Oh, oh, until that music stopped, and yep. they just they looking like a deer in headlights. Yo. Like, <laughs> yeah. You got to know your words, man. If you don't know the you, words you do. of your songs, and you don't need to be performing, you need to get the practice. Hey, let me tell you though, I, I, sometimes the brain ain't working right, man. And I've had moments <laughs> where I I just blank, 
but luckily, you know, I I I like I can you get that freestyle. So, yeah, yeah. When I do mess up, nobody knows. I do, but it's happened, man. You just blank out. One word you slip up on, and if you can't catch up, off. Yep. You know, it's over, man. And then people in the crowd that know the song, you know, they be looking at you like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> 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 the hardest thing is trying to count what bar you were on. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's a feeling also. It's like, okay, I know the feeling of when that it's, verse is over. You already know, man. Because like, let's say, no. like, all right, you got a verse and you're you're pretty solid on most of it, and then you got that one little bar, that one little piece. You're like, all right, well, if I mess this up, I'm gonna go oh. ahead and skip to this, or I'm gonna oh, try to man. reword it. But whenever you actually get there, it don't ever end up being like that, though. Like, <laughs> nah, man. And I, I got anxiety, so like when I know I got a show coming up, man, I am reciting, rehearsing. I'm talking about it could be two months ahead. I am just just going crazy with it you know and, until i'm on stage i get that i got that i still get nervous still get sweaty palms i still get that same feeling i always got man i think that's what what keeps me loving it like i still well, got that practicing? feeling do you have like something like pretending to be a mic and you're just bouncing around the living room or like how? oh do you, yeah how i'll do play you do my it? music act like the stage is there and then i just go in you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like i'm really performing i i try to go over what i'm going to be doing but it don't always work that way because your 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 mind ain't the same when you perform it. So you, a lot of times you do all that worrying and stressing, and you don't even use nothing you practice. Right. You just you just going off the the vibe, you know. Yeah, that's the truth, man. I'm asking you these questions just so other people out here can understand what it takes to be elite at what they're doing. Because a lot of artists out here, like especially in Tampa, man, like. I've had a lot of, like, studio artists, you know what I'm saying? Like, they yeah. only recorded in the studio. They've never even hit a stage. Man. And for me being an artist, like, I can't imagine having music but not being able to perform the music, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's a, my favorite part. That's a part of the artistry. That Exactly. That's a major part of why we do it because you want to connect with the fans. Yep. So I just can't understand it, man. So artists out there, man, it's, it's a whole it's a whole process, man. You can't skip it a is. step, man. Like you gotta perform floor, live. People want to see you. They want to know you gotta that you're get, You got to get it. Thank you. They want to know that you're genuine. Yes, I mean, he's real. You know what I'm saying? Let me mm -hmm. go to a show. Yeah, I love doing yeah. shows, man. I love it, man. How's uh, how's Denver been receiving you? Man, I got here and COVID hit, so <laughs> hey, we ain't really, we haven't even, ain't really much been networking then, huh? That's about hey, it, man. Yeah, we've been networking with some like producers for sure, but yeah. as far as like getting out there and, and and mingling with other MCs, which you have to do, you know, what I'm saying that's been kind of not happening at the moment. Hopefully, this stuff dies down and get to moving, man. A lot of places we need to be going, man. But it's yeah, <laughs> COVID messed all that up. It messed up a lot of plans for me, man. I was supposed to uh, host a Biz Marquee event. Uh, we were supposed to have. Man. We were, we're like the official DJ and host of a, ch a children's museum down here. That's that stuff on really? the table to the end of the year. Yeah, a children's uh, museum. Yeah, because they have adult nights like every month. So I'm the host. My DJ's a DJ, and we're up here. This is pretty much a party for grown folks, man. That's what it is. Wow. Up here but all that stuff got tabled. Like, there's been a whole bunch of stuff that's got canceled because of this Rona, man. So I, <laughs> yeah, I'm praying we figure this out soon. But it's looking, it's looking dismal down here in Tampa, man. I don't know how it's looking in Denver, but in Tampa, this shit. I'm not, I'm not seeing a light in sight. That's how I feel about it right now, bro. Yeah, Denver's. I mean, people be on top of their stuff though, but then there's people be out too. It's like a mixture. Yeah, but for the most part, Denver's like more aware and serious with it than anywhere else i mean i went back to kansas city and junction people ain't wearing masks they just say they, they got 42 <laughs> cases of, of covid in, in, in gary county they ain't <laughs> no man and that town's small too. that's nothing like I, yeah we get like nine thousand a day so that, that's 9, why they're not taking 000. it as serious it kansas ain't real city, until man. it hits you or someone close to you man I'm it telling really you. is I mean, I got really coworkers, are. all that. It's close to me. You know what I'm saying? And I, it, regardless how it how it affects them, you know what I'm saying? They still got it. You know, they may not be like on their deathbed, but the next person might be. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's exactly what you're saying because it doesn't matter about how me and you can handle it. It's about the people that can't handle it, the people that can't fight it, and that's the reason yeah. why. 
we're trying to stay away from them. You know what I'm saying? That way we don't spread it, man. But yeah, yeah. I don't know, bro. I don't, I don't want know, it. Bro. I got lungs. I, I don't, I don't want, want no parts of it. <laughs> yeah, I just ain't got time for that shit, man. I got family over here. If I get it, they got it. He <laughs> said, I ain't stuff, got time. Man. No doubt. I ain't got time for that, bro. I can't I work. Time, what? Man. I ain't got time for that, bro. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Yeah, we talking with show. This is book number nine of the Junction City Chronicles. I uh, I think it's time to play a song here, man. What, what do I want to play here? Let's roll with inspiration. Let's roll with inspiration. So mm. break this song down for people, man. This is one of my favorite songs. Man, thanks, man. Inspiration is like, um, it's just basically explaining, like, trying to explain, like, how. I grab inspiration and where it comes from, you know. Um, I don't normally write until I'm inspired. I don't force music. I don't believe in writer's block. I just feel like I'm not inspired at the moment, so I ain't going to write and force it. So I'm just trying to explain, like, what it feels like to, to be at that moment when you're inspired. Dope. This is inspiration from the show. We'll be right back. I was sitting here in the passenger side. I wish I could explain how it feels to grab inspiration And turn it to something that you can feel with my imagination I'm telling you, I ain't never wanna be famous So I never felt the pressure of anything that it came with But I was so attracted to rapping the human language I would put the words together and then I would begin saying it See, I ain't never think of arranging it or you playing it Or any circumstance where you end up paying me shit That is all I ever did from the round the day I was 10 Anything to do with rap, I would play and play it again I was captivated sonically, I was taking it in See, I was constantly around the beat, couldn't wait to begin But I ain't know that it would amount to me embracing the pen I would write a rap and then I would start escaping again It's everything I put on paper, but God said to me Spoke to me in parables, told me to write it legendary. Either you hate it, you got a lot of respect for me. Either way you put it, you probably standing next to me. And study what I cook up and hoping to get the recipe. I breathe inspiration, everything is the best of me. You study what I cook up and hoping to get the recipe. I breathe inspiration, everything is the best of me. I wish I could explain how it feels. Grab inspiration. And turn it to something that you can feel with my imagination. Oh yeah. Said I wish I could explain how it feels to grab inspiration And ball it up into something that's real for your appreciation See, before I begin, I get a touch from my sire Creator of the world, the one who made me a writer Pretty sure that I can give you a reason to be inspired Like every day you wake up to life that you have acquired See, I get a sensation whenever I'm writing fire I'ma call it inspiration, I feel it in every fiber I know I'm getting help from a power that's way up higher Elevating what I say to a track that you can admire I'm on a platform, balancing like a diver Creating, I can make you forget what you heard prior Competition want me to fail like I am Walking the wire, ain't no slacking. I'ma tell them to pull the rope even tighter. See, I got love for rap, that's collectively. But see, a lot of you rappers get no respect for me. I be in the place at the moment where I expect to be. And I'ma keep giving you bars what you expect from me. I practice on the daily, perfection is what you get from me. Heavenly, God is above me, no one ahead of me. I practice on the daily, perfecting is what you get from me. Heavenly, God is above me, no one ahead of me. I wish I could explain how it feels. Grab inspiration. Turn it to something that you can feel with my imagination. I said I wish I could explain how it feels to grab inspiration. And ball it up into something that's real for your appreciation. Oh yeah. 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 What you guys just heard was inspiration by the homie show. We having our own little conversation on the background, man. It's about everything, but this is yes, a, this is family right here, man. This is Jumpster City Chronicles. It's book number nine. 
You and know, like I said, that's inspiration, man. And you inspire me, like when it comes to artists out of the town. Uh, as far as that pen goes, man, that pen is second to none, bro. That pen is second to none. So I want to know where I want to know what your first rap name was, and I want to know where show came from. Man, my first my first rap name was uh, eight. It was Mumbles, Ag Mumbles, Agony, and then Mumbles in one because for one, I, I spoke terribly. I like mumbled a lot, and I didn't speak as clear. You said you, know? you used to rap to get over a speech impediment. Is that what I, I heard? Yep, I had I had a terrible lisp, and I stuttered, man. So, and people would be like, "Yo, you got bars, man, but I can't really understand what you're saying." So I focused on just enunciation and speaking as clear as I can, you know, to get that out there. Like my lisp is still there. I just I basically gave myself speech therapy, man. That's what my wife told me. Because I just learned to to put my tongue on the roof of my mouth and, and push it back further. So I ain't sounding like this. You know, sounding like Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> this how I just this how I normally sound if I ain't doing it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, man, I taught myself if I push my tongue back further, it, it don't it don't that doesn't happen. So it's something I gotta think about all the time, bro. <laughs> I was just gonna ask you that. Like you like if you ever just get caught slipping and you just you talking or that's something that you're always mindful of. Always mindful. Actually, now it's like it's like natural for me to do it because I've been doing it so long. It's like muscle memory or something. But sometimes you can hear it still, depending on like that's why like when I write songs and rhymes, there's certain words I can't say back to back, you know. So I gotta pick like every word strategically, especially when it comes to like like fast rapping. Mm -hmm. Like it's gotta be strategic the words I use because I can't pronounce certain words back to back because of that, you know. It sucks. I hear some people right, that's a fast. whole like, other level of, of difficulty that you're working through that a lot of people don't even have to worry about, man. That's that's wild. Yeah. It makes it makes you more creative though. You gotta think of other words to use. Yeah, that's straight respect right there, man. Because that's some whole other shit. That's stuff you gotta tackle that I wouldn't even think of. Oh man, it was terrible. But I got it. <laughs> so now yeah, it's like did. now it's like, man, you speak proper. <laughs> <laughs> well, what does that, that even means? mean, bro? Right. You know, what that oh, means. you know what that means. Oh, I sound educated, <laughs> educated. <laughs> Man, what was uh, what was like the first piece of uh, of like music equipment that you owned? A keyboard. Okay. A keyboard. Yep. You get down. I, I can't read music, but I can I can play by ear. Not, I mean, okay. I'm not like great or anything, but I can definitely play. Yeah, I can play some stuff. Yep. That's why I, I was going to teach myself how to play guitar, man, but that ain't happened yet. I might, I might still do that. You got time? You in a quarantine right now? No, I, you know what? That, that yo, that is great idea, bro. I yeah, mean, I can go buy me a cheap acoustic, pop on YouTube. About two months, I'll be Lee Clef. <laughs> <laughs> See, you already got the name and everything. Man. Lee Clef, I'm you telling be, you. You be featuring on your own songs, huh? I know, right? Oh, man. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, we're talking to Lee. Uh, Lee. Now you got me calling you by the government, bro. No, that's now, all good, man. That's my name. <laughs> We're going to show, man. This is book number nine of the JC Chronicles. Talking to one of the homies, man, like one of the OGs of the game. I want to know. Let me see here. You said you do. You did your first song when you was around ten. So between yeah. then and now, uh, how has music like not really changed, but like how has it evolved? You know, I think I don't even know if it's a good thing, but I think the era I grew up in, like sounding like someone else, and like even like mimicking that style was like a no go. Like that's the last thing you wanted to hear. It's like, yo, you sound like such Shark. and such. It's like. Oh, yeah, you're a biter. Well, you biting. What are you doing? But now, I mean, once there's a wave to be ridden, I mean, the whole universe rides this wave, bro. The same sound, same melody, same everything. And like, Cadence. for me, it's like, there's no creativity in that, man. Like, that's the difference between someone who do it because they love it and someone who do it just to make money, you know. If you're just riding waves, you, you're, trying to, you're trying to get that pocket fat, you know. I do it because mm -hmm. I love it. So I'm trying to be more creative versus I don't want to sound like nobody. So when I'm creating music, I don't listen to no rap. I don't listen to that much rap as it is. But when I'm listening to when I'm when I'm creating, I keep that 
<laughs> separate. I don't listen to hip hop when I'm writing in the, in, the, in the middle of a project. I might listen to some alternatives, some, some jazz, classical, a lot of R&B, but as far as like other rappers, <laughs> nope, I won't even play it. Now, hold up. Hold up. Man. Are you leaving? Hey, I'm, I'm doing something right now, so... Yeah, give me a kiss. Have a good day. I'll see you in a little bit, okay? <laughs> I will. Okay. Promise you. <laughs> she wants to be a part of it all, man. Hey, hey, you, you teaching her. She, you know, you know what she's gonna be when she get older. She's gonna be a monster when she gets older, man. Like <laughs> uh, she's she's five right now, so probably like three years ago when she was like two or so. Uh, she yeah. took her to some little show uh, that they let kids in, like, it was a daytime event. And she's on stage trying to get the microphone and all this stuff. And it's like, I haven't taught her none of this. So she's just learning this from watching. She's just learning. She watching. Yeah. You're teaching her, all right? You may not be teaching her, but you're teaching her by, by what you're doing. Yeah. She's soaking it all in, man. 90% is what they see. <laughs> you do. She's going to be a she's gonna be a monster, you know? <laughs> like, for real. Huh. She might even have some bars to her. Ain't no telling. Oh, I bet. <laughs> all right, man. Let me see here. What, we were just talking about. Uh, she messed me all Difference up. Difference in music. Difference in music. Okay. Yeah. All right. How everything's evolved. All yeah. right. Where do I want to go with this here? Where are we at on time right now, actually? 254. Okay. Dang. All right. All right. So I want to know about the next projects that you got coming up. I know I've already played. Uh, shelter in place when we did Hash's book, uh, and we also played it on the radio too, man. Uh, that was that's a jam right there, man. I, I oh, love that kind of music, that that real yeah. music. So is that is that the next project you guys got coming out, or do you have something else in the meantime? Or no, that's that's the next. I I was, I was honestly I wasn't gonna do any solo, nothing this whole year. I was just gonna take a breather, cleanse my palate, get my music mm -hmm. sounding different. You know, to me, if I write back to back to back to back, everything starts sounding a little bit similar. So. I kind of got to take a break from all that and not write anything solo. But this project with me and Hash, that's what I got coming this year and we got coming. Other than that, nope. But I'm starting some stuff, definitely that. <laughs> Sometime next year, perhaps, whenever it happens, I'm in no rush. I have no deadlines. <laughs> Tell me about Black Radio. How did that come about? Oh, man, that's a project I did with my guy. That's a whole nother project right My there. Guy right Reach, there too, man. man. That that I love that project, man. And he is a crazy rapper. And it just so happened to be on that project. He just produced the entire thing, man. And we just came together and formed Voltron. <laughs> Y'all really did, man. That, that was like a Bill Sharp and Steel type project right there. I, he's I was, just I, as good of an MC. He's I was like, who is, I was like, who's Black Radio? I was like, who's this for show? I was like, oh shit, they like, snapping. Oh man, yeah, that, that that project is dope, man. I love it. I bumped that on the regular. Still, that's that's a pretty solid project right there, man. So he's from KC or or what? Yeah, yeah, he's from Kansas City. Yep. Well, okay. and I know you used to live there. in KC, right? Did, uh, yeah. How long ago was that? Well, how long did you used to live in? How long were you in KC for? I, I got there in '04. Okay. All right, yeah. I'm, I uh, when I left when I left Can when I left Johnson City, I actually moved to Kansas City. So really, I left uh, yeah, I left halfway through freshman year. Yeah, my mom moved to KC, and then I came back halfway through senior year. So I went to graduate with my people, and then yeah, after that. after high school, I went to Mizzou, and then after Did Mizzou, you? I went back to Kansas City. Yeah, man, you went to Mizzou. I'm surprised, man. Yeah, I had to get up out of there, man. The plan was for uh, I didn't want to go to K State. It was too close. I don't like yeah. the, the Jayhawks, so that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, definitely. And then the plan was actually go to Arizona State. Really? But stuff fell through at the last moment, and I got an academic scholarship to go to Mizzou. So I, I went to Mizzou, man. Oh, so you were one, you one of them nerd cats. Yeah, all the way, bro. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all the, the same way. here. Hey, all the way. I got contacts now, but before look, the contacts, yeah, I couldn't even. Mm. I, I try to tell the youngsters now it's okay to be the oddball, man. It is it. now. It's a great it thing. is now. I mean, it wasn't like it wasn't bad back then. You was just unique back then. But you know, yeah. now people celebrate. You know, the the mismatched clothes and all this other stuff that we would have got clowned for oh, back man. in the day. 
Dang, so you was in KC? How long, how long was you there? I was in KC, uh, probably like a total of six years, probably. Dang, all right. Yeah. Yo, bar for bar and song for song, I put Kansas City against any state in this country, bro. It, it is. I know some beasts. You probably know Shadow, don't you? Who? Shadow? Shadow? Yeah, yeah, I know Shadow. Yeah, I know him since monster. we were kids, man. Really? Really. That he's dude a has monster, hot. bro. You want to yeah, go get him? He's on a battle the court. rapper for sure. Get him on the court, though. This dude can touch the top of the backboard. Dang, hops like that. Yeah, he be spitting. Too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. I miss KC, man. I didn't really get to get into the music scene out there before I dipped out, man. So that's one thing. Like I do, just check back here and there. But I know that we have some spitters that come out the whole Midwest, man. Like, the Midwest don't really seem to get the respect that, nah, you know, the, the East or, or down South now gets, like, because nobody's really popped out besides, like, Tech or Kanye or, you know what I'm saying? Which is really crazy. I don't Nelly, understand I mean, that. You know I don't saying, understand. I don't it's understand. It's all about, uh, it's all about marketing, man. That's all yeah, it's man. Really like, they're not it's all politics, the too. Yeah. But it's going to happen really gets it no is Eminem's yeah. like the Midwest savior, you know what I'm saying? Because that's how they they put him out there. But yeah, and and but it has no choice but to happen, man. Because it's just too much in that little area, man. It has to happen. Somebody gonna come out and just be Janelle Monae. She from Kansas City. Yeah, trust me, I, you know I, I claim that one every time. <laughs> every Kansas, time she come on, oh yeah, you know she from KC. Yo, you talk. You want to talk about jazz? You know, I talk about. Live instruments, you want to talk about MCing, singing, all of it, man. Kansas City is just a big melting pot of just good music, man. Like, for real. You can go through it a whole week and just find good little little, little dope shows. Some talent really out there, man. Because I haven't been back there in, in a while, man. Like, I'm not the, like, I haven't lived there, let me say, in a while. So I yeah. know that the talent's just been bubbling and... You know, kids that were kids back then are, are grown now, and they've been growing up in this. So I can I understand that they should be ready, ready for the get down, man. Let me let me ask you something about this, man. Because one thing about like the youth, like the younger artists, don't seem to have their business right. So you can you drop some jewels, like as far as like ASCAP, BMI, stuff like that. Like drop some like I mean, uh, some branding and like publishing tools, man. Those are definitely important, man. That you got to keep track of, uh, and and I think like. You need to put stuff out through, you know, bigger sources, you know, because it's going to be heard through more people and doing it locally, man. Just, I mean, who are you going to get to hear it? You need that backing. People you know get saying? mad. You need, you need to down be, here you need in to Tampa, like, oh, these artists don't want to support me. They don't want to, they don't want to, they don't want unity, all this other stuff. And it's just like artists are, are promoting to artists. We're trying to get fans out here, man. Like, bro, you need to be on multiple artists, streams, yo. man. Not just, you know, SoundCloud. You know, you need to go through the whole. Pr it's expensive being a yo. <laughs> the numbers is free. free. You support it by free. yourself, and you got to be willing to put out that money, man. You got to spend. You're gonna have to. You need just stuff on multiple streams, getting heard in multiple. Like, what better way to have your music out there than like, you know, through the net. Like Especially all you're, you're, right you're now. a touch away. You're a touch away from, from being heard by millions of people. With and you need a you need you need a way to keep track of that. So when mm -hmm. you do if you do get a buzz and someone happens to pick you up, you need you need to have like, you know, stats and, and proof of what you then did and you know how many fans you got, how many albums you sold. You know, you, you need to keep track of that stuff, man. It's important. Very much so. Very much so. And then you you're missing out on money on top of that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. People don't even know they can get paid off of You can be a SoundCloud rapper. That's cool. But yeah. If you set it up right, you can get paid off SoundCloud. So set it definitely. up right. You get, you, yeah. Definitely. You can get paid off iTunes, Amazon, yeah. all them streams, you know? It's Different all platforms. I'm looking at it as a business, man, because a lot of people say they want to get into a music business, but they're not business-minded. Well, you know, the thing with me is, like, I, I would love to make money off of like a lot of money off of, off of music. You know, I love to be able to not work and do that, but to be honest with you, man, I, I do it cause I love it. If, if the money comes, that's great. But to be honest with you, man, I'm, I'm comfortable in life right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Got a home, got a family, got a vehicle. I own all that stuff. So, I mean, I, I don't do it to, 
to make money so I'm able to come from a different space when I create, you know. I do it because I love it. I've been doing this till I'm 90, man. Paid or not paid. <laughs> I have to. It's a part of you, man. You can't suppress that piece of you, you know? Nope. I have to, man. So those uh, getting paid would be great. I love it, period. <laughs> and that's the difference, man. Just like you touched on earlier, man. There's a difference between people that actually do it for love and people that do it for money. You know, yeah. what I found is that people that do it for love, a lot of times money comes. But the people that do it for money, that, that stuff seems to dry up after a while. So. Well, that's why that's where a riding the wave comes from all the time. Mm-hmm. You're just trying to get paid. So whatever's popping and sounding good, that's what you're going to be. You know, Especially right for. now, you can, record a, you can record a song right now and get on the internet like within 20 minutes probably. So these guys no are just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> they waiting for the next gimmick to hop on. I know it's crazy. That that's what I was saying though. That's the difference between like our era and the era today. Like they want to sound like someone else. Like that's the goal. Like, I want that sound. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Versus us, it's like I don't want to sound like that at all. Nah, I want to be a one of one, man. That's how I'm trying to be. Yep. For real, for real, man. I want to go ahead and play another track of yours. Uh, let's see, we went through Mona Lisa. Let's go ahead and go into Tell Them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that exact. That's just bars, bro. That's just. That's just like showing, like, okay, this is where I can go. I stay here, but I can go this and here. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's just showing, just showing off, basically. I like that. I like that analogy. <laughs> It says everything. <laughs> it says everything. I can already see the face. I can see that face back there. I can uh, already see it. Uh, he he gave me that hash face. He just split. He just split me off, man. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into tell him right here. This is book nine of the Junction City Chronicles. I'm talking to the homie show. We'll be right back. <laughs> This thing on? <laughs> Midwest got something to say, man. Yes, sir. If I am my brother's keeper, I should be honest and tell him. Because the consequences, if I don't speak up, they gon' have that whack shit playing through your speakers. I'm like, if I am my brother's keeper, I should be honest and tell him. Because the consequences, if I don't speak up, they gon' hear that whack shit and tell you that it's ether. Middle of the map, little bit of that rap, but it be invisible to cats. All of my niggas a little off that yak, every individual that. You see me with indivisible, in fact, satirical to get critical of cats. Thinking they are the pinnacle of rap, I am thinking the identical of that. Pitiful tracks and up in the middle of the trash And I give a minimal claps Lyrical, I will adapt Everything is visible, look at the map And it be dependable getting you back Because you are the epitome of rap I am religiously stating the fact The industry lack, the energy that Was meant to be put in the track I'ma physically do what was meant to be And put the industry right on my back And give it a lift I'm telling you that originality don't exist I got a gift And I'm excelling every individual out of a spit Yeah, I'm a dick That mean I'm cocky I don't know another rapper that can stop me Unless he loaded up his gun and he shot me Otherwise I beat the beat up like Rocky I'm yelling out Adrian as soon as I drop it Two minutes and 27 seconds into the second round I really don't know what everybody here expected And really y'all don't want the crown But I'm just saying If I am my brother's keeper I should be honest and tell him Because the consequences If I don't speak up They gon' have that whack shit Playing through your speakers I'm like If I am my brother's keeper I should be honest and tell him Because the consequences If I don't speak up They gon' hear that whack shit And tell you that it's easy a little bit of fame will make a rapper change up for a little bit of change All I really wanted was a little bit of recognition be a household name Everybody in my city wanna be the competition, wear the crown for a day I thought I found my escape wrapped up in the rock and tape That was back in 88, and I could remember what rock M say Be a microphone fiend, tell him don't sweat a technique I'ma let the rhythm hit him when I get him, bet he wanna be the snare and the beat There is no comparing him to me, nobody that is preparing him to be Is anyone even aware of the fact that I don't even really care enough to be in the conversation with a record label And the label ain't aware of what I need but you don't even hear me though until they play me up in your stereo And somebody be like, he got material And I think you should listen to it 
here you go. I'm an anomaly, really an alien. Everybody might be on to me. Something nobody can promise me that I ain't part of what I'm doing. Rap anatomically. I'm an anomaly, really an alien. Everybody might be on to me. Something nobody can promise me that I ain't part of what I'm doing. Rap anatomically. If I am my brother's keeper, I should be honest and tell him. Because the consequences if I don't speak up, they gon' have that whack shit playing through your speakers. I'm like, if I am my brother's keeper, I should be honest and tell him. Because the consequences if I don't speak up, they gon' hear that whack shit and tell you that it's ether. That was telling by the homie's show. Uh, this book nine of the JC Chronicles, man. Another just dope track off the off the whole project, bro. You talking about my shirt, though, man. Nipsey, I'm a huge Nipsey fan, bro. You should be huge Nipsey fan, be. man. I, I wish I wish there was something new coming from him right now. I'm actually surprised that he didn't have music in, in the vault. Honestly, he might like, have, I feel I like you never know. I feel like we would have already heard an album from him already. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, I'm man. a little bit surprised. You don't just put out a Nipsey track. <laughs> you probably right. You probably right. <laughs> you probably got to go through the proper procedures. <laughs> yeah, you, you probably all the way right with that one. I ain't Definitely that. that. Shit. <laughs> that cat's on your, on your head. <laughs> straight up. Straight up. Yeah. Man. So, what's up with the shirt you got on right now, man? Oh, man. This is made by my homie Rel, man. Culture Creations, man. Oh, you know, he, he was an MC, part of the squad back in the day. Still is. You know what I mean? He, he got his own little little brand called culture creations on instagram you could definitely find them i think it's c u l t u r apostrophe b creations <laughs> <laughs> dang i hope that's right yeah like hey don't even put it out there you don't even know it though. you're gonna have somebody else get the promo he's gonna be <laughs> i'm pretty sure that's it i hope so man what i want to know like just being being who you are, like being as a dope as an artist as you are, like for the artists coming up out of JC, like right now, I don't know if they have any type of direction. So what type of direction would you try to give them or, or some type of tidbit or, or, or some type of tip? Man, my best advice I can give you is to, to be yourself, man. Even if you're like, man, ain't no one going to receive this. So what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't, don't let them dictate what type of music you're going to put out, man, or, or what type of artist you're going to be. Just be yourself, man. They'll adjust. You know what I'm saying? And you'll gain authentic fans that way. You know, like, like the people that I got that like my music, they're, they're authentic and they, they're they there. You know what I'm saying? And they're going to be there because I'm true to that, you know, I'm true to being myself. And, and one thing, I, I mean, I don't, I've never rushed a project. I've never, sometimes it flows and I, finish a whole project like that. And then sometimes I'm just not inspired to write at the moment, you know? So, and I don't have no deadlines, man. I'd be hating that. Like, yo, I got to come out you know, next week. It's like, I ain't got to answer nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm creating what I want to create and whatever create and comes out of that. That's what it is. Whenever it is, you know, I don't. So anymore. whenever it is like whenever that spark hits you, like, is it like a two in the morning type thing? And man, you got to get up out of bed and four hours Dude, later, it, like eight, Songs it's done. just like that. It's like I'm going to sleep. My brain won't cut off. I keep cutting the light on. And then a lot of times, man, I do a lot of cycling, man. And when I'm out there riding, man, I come out with, like, most of my material. You know, because it's just me and my thoughts. And then I, a beats that I get, I'll play them through my Bluetooth headphones mm -hmm. while I'm riding. And you just come up with all types of stuff, man. Your brain's working. I love it, man. I want to know uh, who was the artist that really inspired you to to get down, like a mainstream artist. Man, you gonna make me date myself, bro? Because man, one of my it's crazy to hear it, but one of my biggest okay. First off, D, D Nice was like a uh, my name is D Nice. Like his rhyme mm -hmm. patterns, Rakim's rhyme patterns, but like and DJ Quick, man, he he was a major part of me rhyming, man. Like a lot of people don't think that's possible, but DJ Quick had a major influence on my rapping and rock him definitely his cadences man it reminded me of like it reminded me of like horn playing you know like da -da 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 -da. you know I, I could hear horns behind his his rhyme and rhyming patterns he was just different man he brought a whole different you know cadence to swagger rap. to it too man like versus no 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 he came with a 
no, 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 to fit that cadence, you know, it's, it's, it's there in every beat, bro. There's multiple ones, but there's that one pocket that you can stay in where you ain't going above it or below it. You know, you can just mm -hmm. stay in. It's hard to explain, man, but you can just mastermind. find that. Mastermind, you're a musical mastermind there. on here right now, man. I'm listening. I'm so I mean, most of them seems to tell you that. They'll be like, yeah. there's a pocket where you're not overdoing it and you're not underdoing it. You just stay in there, you know. You ain't got to do nothing extra, man. Just find it and stay there. And be confident in that. I want to describe yourself as an artist to anybody who has not heard you. Describe myself as an artist, man. Usually I like to lead off with this. But that's why I decided to play music first. But I'm, I'm all about the craft, man. I'm, I'm all about the bars and reaching people through messages. And, like, I don't have a specific, you know, style or anything, man. I just... I just do what comes to mind. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm bar heavy. I like bars and I want to be the best. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> I want to out rap everybody. <laughs> oh, shit. Now you got me think of a question for you for real. If we're being okay. honest, I want to out rap everybody. Like, is there anybody you have not uh, out rapped? If you're asking me, no. I don't. I wouldn't say I outrap them, but <laughs> I definitely don't get outrap. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's been nobody ever like, pop back on. Like, yo, we got to run that shit back, son. No, nah, man, I'm confident in whatever I write. So, like, when I send out like song, like, okay, so a lot of people, when they want you to feature on a song, they send you the song, but it's open. There's nothing there. It's like, okay, I want you to do your verse and send it to me, and I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm with that. But like for me, what, like if I send you a song to get on. Man, I'm sending you the full song, all my verses, hook, because I want you to match that or do better. You know what I'm saying? And that's yeah, what I want from you. So, yeah, so I'm going to send you the whole full thing. And, like, I think a lot of people want to hear what you do first. And then it's like, oh, okay, I see where you're coming from. I'm going to have to top this cat. Okay, cool. That's mm -hmm. what I like. I like that. You know what I'm saying? And I want you to do that whenever you're on the track with me or else you ain't going to be on the track. <laughs> Oh man, I got I got some impossible questions for you to answer right now. Just just off of that right there, you can you can set yourself up now. So what? I want to know how who, who I want to go with this first. All right, let's say there's a wrap off between Royce the Five Nine, <clears throat> Joiner Lucas, boy. Mm. Let's just keep it simple. And yourself. And yourself. <laughs> no, nah, 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 I won't even throw you in there. I won't even throw you in there. Yeah, this is going to be a wrap-off between Joyner, uh, who would I say, Royce the 5'9", and let's say somebody like uh, like Kendrick. So you need to keep one of them. You got to get rid of one of them, and one of them is going to be on the bench. You got to keep one of them. Dang. Man. Keep one of them. I would do kid. I would keep Kendrick for sure because he, he's he he made good songs. You know what I'm saying? And the, he he ain't just a rapper. He's he's a spitter plus because like a lot of battle rappers, they can't make good songs like that. And like I wouldn't consider him a battle rapper, but I would consider him a battle rapper. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, and I, mm -hmm. I would pick him to keep because he's gonna have content all the time. It's gonna be different. And then uh, one to get away, give to throw out, man. But well, you said Kendrick, Joyner, and Royce. Royce. Mm -hmm. I would, I would bench Royce and get rid of Joyner because I'm a bigger Royce fan. Just off that alone, and Royce's bars are just. Stupid. And I don't know if you heard many of his projects, man, but the, the, he's definitely in my top five. Them prime projects have just been. Oh man. Lately, man, no like, doubt. Yeah, no doubt. And he has content, too. Mm -hmm. Talk about different things. And he can just rap, man. You know, he's dope. And Joyner, don't get me wrong. Joyner is dope. I just feel like Joyner doesn't have enough material yet exactly. to keep him over Royce. 
Exactly. And I mean, yeah, I, I just haven't listened to a lot of Joe. I heard that new Will song he came out with before, mm -hmm. and I thought that was pretty, pretty dope. Before all the entanglements and shit. Oh man. <laughs> I mean, if that's what you want to call him. Man. <laughs> I feel bad for Will right now. He's gonna have fun this month. Hey, they man, look, Will, so look how many Will times you think? Month, how many times you think Will did that? Like plenty. I mean, so it's how like, many times you get? How many times did he get caught up? Oh yeah, not all of them. That's the sure. problem. He, he told them, but it's like they mouth shut. But it's like in order for you to think. I mean, I'm sure he's. He, I could tell from my scene like an interview they gave, and it was basically like you've done this too. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I don't know, man. That lifestyle. They're better than me. I can't do that shit, man. What's mine is mine. I ain't fucking off with that one. Uh, that's, oh, man. Yeah, that's how people get hurt. <laughs> Straight I'm out. out. Uh, out. We're from, we from a different age bracket with two. Just like the whole Takashi 6 9 with the situation. Like, that shit ain't flying back in my day. Nah, man. That's terrible, man. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> you know what that's I mean? But. It. The, the, the day and age we live in, nothing's gonna happen. He's gonna make millions still. It's just that's just what it is these days. I, I don't know. That's what it is. It's not for days. me to understand. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't even try. You look at me all sideways, like you really think? Yeah, I really do think that. Cause, and I'm from the middle of Kansas on top of this shit, so I know how it would have got handled in the middle of Kansas back then. Man, oh man, we're talking about even 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 coming from where we from. <laughs> yeah, they're safe. But, they're safe there too, man. Not nothing happened. It's, yeah. it's just a different, different time, man. It's a different, it's a different age now. <laughs> it is. Man. Everything's different. Everything. It really is, man. So, how do you find yourself staying relevant with all the changes and, and with everything going on now? Staying true to myself. If I'm relevant to me, then I, who cares? That's my thing. Though. I don't. I don't. I mean, I I would love for you to like my music and to love my stuff, but if you don't, I'm still gonna do it. You know what I mean? And I'm gonna be true to who I am. I ain't, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lean this way because it's gonna attract this type of person. You know, I'm, I'm gonna stay true to who I am. And if you, real respect it, you know, I do shows with gangsters mm -hmm. all the time, and they be the first ones to be like, "Yo, man, I respect what you're saying," because it's, it's, it's different. You know, what I'm saying, and I ain't scared to go perform it when the other, these, all these other cats talking about this, this, and that. A lot of times, my songs are talking about people who talk about this, this, and that. You know, not in a bad <laughs> way, just, just. Just basically saying, like, you know, there's, there's more. Be you. Than Quit fronting. Yeah. Because, I mean, yeah. if you're real with it, you're real with it. But, man, 90% ain't. It's not. And then what's and real And they be the main ones said, talking about all the stuff that they got. And you can see that they clearly don't have it if you see them in real life. Yeah. And I don't mind. Don't get me wrong. Like, like gangster rap and stuff like that. I, if you're real, you're real. And that's what you grew up with. And that's what you saw. But to me, there's a difference. You can still get the story across. There's a difference between saying Johnny got shot by someone and or saying I shot Johnny. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like like there's a way to do it without glorifying it and making it look so so pretty all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like I could tell the same story you telling, but I could tell it from, you know, a different viewpoint. I didn't do it. I just saw it happen. You know what I'm saying? Right. I didn't shoot Johnny, but Johnny does get shot in the hood. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you talk about how you're a storyteller. So who's uh who's some of the storytellers that that drove you to to get down? Like I'm, I'm pretty sure, like I can think of some names, but who are like oh, some yeah. of the storytellers mainstream that that really uh oh. that really catch your interest? D DJ Quick Storyteller Man with, with tonight that song. <laughs> Yo, when I was young, I probably shouldn't have been listening to it, but I yeah, there's a lot of stuff we shouldn't have been doing. Back he then. was saying in that song, bro. I was like, Yo, this dude just took me on like a. a I went to the party. <laughs> I just spent the whole day with DJ Quick. I spent tonight with DJ Quick. Pause. Yeah, all the way. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. That's a snippet. That's a snippet for the interview right there, too. Oh <laughs> man. <Boom. laughs> nah, but <laughs> that that story he told in that song, bro. I was I was I was on that whole ride. LL. His story with I need love, man. Like, that whole story he told, I was I was there with him, man. Uh, Ghostface, man. Nas. Oh man, it's just it's it's endless. The stories NWA used to tell about the hood. Let me hit you with this question from. real quick, man. Who's a better storyteller between? Uh, let's go, Slick Rick and Scarface. Dang, Scarface is a storyteller, man. 
being that my mind playing tricks on me is like one of my all time favorites. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Scarface, bro, because man, and uh, cry all his songs, bro, that like he came out with. I mean, I, I can picture everything he's saying. Paint pictures, man. Scarface. I'm gonna say Scarface. Okay. okay. Yep. I like it. I like it, man. All right, let me hit you with one last question. I'm just uh, I'm trying to think out the box here. If you uh, let's say this is 2021. You got a chance to finish the project with Hash. You got a chance to work on your own solo project and everything is done. And you guys are out there in Denver. You're about to put on your solo uh, album premiere concert. And you can pick, let's say, four artists that could be mainstream, that could be local. Matter of fact, no, let's just do mainstream. That way I can relate this to everybody else. But mainstream Mm. artists, you have four mainstream artists that can open for your album release. Who would they be? Any of them? Any of them. Oh, man. Any living artist. Any living artist. Okay, living artist. It's going to be Andre 3000 for show. Um, oh, Drake. All day. He's bringing everybody. The whole world's coming to it if Drake's there. Uh, let me see. Janet Jackson. Mm. And probably... System of a down, bro. If I can get mm. that group to come back together, and they brought tons of energy to it. So you're trying to have the get whole them. world at your damn album. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and 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 system, they got an energy, man. That's just it's stupid, crazy. And if they was on before me, and then I went on after that, the crowd's gonna be already ready. They're ready. Even if you don't <laughs> like that type of music. Yeah. That's what it is. That's a I, I did not expect to hear those four names. That's a random ass four, but I can rock with it though. But it's what a random Janet? four that's gonna bring Janet? random crowds. What about Janet, man? What 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 does it for you for Janet? Oh, Janet is Janet, man. Like I grew up listening to Janet, man. And she she's popular as hell. It's Janet. She's a Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> if you're nasty. Right. You ain't even got to say a last name. You just say Janet. Everybody know who the hell you're talking about. Oh, yeah, man. It's Janet, bro. She's definitely there. And she, you ever seen her, her her stage shows and performances? Man, Drake be doing a lot of crazy shows. Andre is definitely crazy with shows. <laughs> and System, I they're definitely. Saw, I saw Outcast one time, man. It wasn't too long ago when they, uh, when they got together again. It's probably Really? It's like five years ago, probably. Dang, one of the dopest that? shows. One of the dopest shows, dog. I bet. Yeah, like I still talk to my DJ about this because he missed the show for whatever reason that night. So me and Wifey was out there jamming. But yeah, uh, yeah. Of course, three sacks will come out of retirement to do your show, man. Like who'll be out there, man? I, <laughs> yo, if he would, I wish he would, man. But I understand why he's not. I wish he would, but I understand why he's not. You know, the music game is not the prettiest thing in the world you know what i'm saying and especially once you get up to that level you can see people you know there's nothing but sharks out there so oh, you can man. understand man like at some point people get tired of being being taken advantage of man so, yeah and, and he's like, like what do i write about he's, he's like yeah. what do i write about you know what i'm saying like what new experiences have i had how am i being inspired i get it you know what i'm saying he's just not inspired to write because i wouldn't write either if i wasn't Right. I'll do I maybe verses here and there because that's easy. But like coming up with a whole project, man, when you're not inspired to do it, man, it's you're gonna be able to hear it that you weren't inspired during that time, you know. And then you know, what's the point of even doing it for money? Yeah. Or exactly. for people to be yeah. happy, but and you're he's not happy. making yourself happy. He's exactly. rich. He don't need to do it for money. He's just he's just there, man. I wish he would though. <laughs> I'm waiting on it. I'm waiting on another outcast album all to get all the way. No doubt, man, because AT Aliens, that entire that project, that's one of my all time favorite albums ever. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole just the whole project is dope. <laughs> and back then, even right now, even yeah. right now, dog. even like, right you can now, listen to that shit but, right but now. Back then, man, it was like, yeah, Next you can level. play that whole project all the way through right now, and be like, dang, these dudes was nice. Even down to the CD cover, dog. You remember opening that shit up? You oh like, man, oh, no shit. doubt. <laughs> that project. <laughs> I remember the first time I heard. Do you know? You remember, did you ever know Dan Harbor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was the first one that introduced us to Outcast, man. Like our freshman year of high school, it was a uh, players' ball. 
Southern he player put the headphones on, and I was mm-hmm. listening mm-hmm. like, "Yo, what is this? <laughs> what is this music?" You I remember play? that moment, man. Oh, I remember man. that moment too, though. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, they need to do something, man. And who would ever thought, like the twenty twenty? It's twenty five years, pretty much. Man. And these guys are have too many classics. From that moment on, they didn't open up the South to the world. Oh man! Like we, we talked to Big Gip not too long ago about uh, about like the influences of organized noise on just oh. the music industry, and it was just like hearing his stories. With the stuff we already seen on TV and everything, it's yeah, just, it was amazing, man. Yeah, that really was one of the was. first big show, like opening shows we ever did was was opening for Goody Mob back in the day, and that was that was live. <laughs> that was live, man. Well, man, I want to say thank you once again for taking time out to talk to me. I know you have a busy schedule, and oh, uh, man. just taking the time out to talk to me about this, listen to some new music. It's uh, it's been great, man. Book nine of the Chronicles. I got show, and uh, like I said, man, you the OG, dog. Like you one of the, <laughs> the the first cats to, to really do shit out there when it comes to music, man. And man, you know, I, I didn't even that. know you, you back then, but I, I'm me and you came up together, so I've I've seen you yep. around for quite a bit of time, man. And oh I yeah, no doubt. I admire what you're doing. Yeah, thanks, man. I, I appreciate what you're doing, man. You're definitely doing something big for the town, and not for the town, just for hip hop, period, man. Appreciate the I appreciate movement. that, man. Yeah, no doubt, Give the man. people I'm your information honored. so they can find you, though, man. Oh, man, finding me? Oh, I'm on uh, Instagram. Milk show boxes. Under- and- show <laughs> underscore, a.k.a. underscore Mike Tyson. Uh, Twitter, Showtime underscore 55. And then uh, I'm on the book, LaVarne Show Service. That's it. Yeah, man. Yeah. This cat right here, like I said, y'all, like, you guys want to hear some bars? This dude right here is the one you want to listen to. And uh, I've had, we got to play Black Radio. We played uh, the track with you and Hash on the on the show. So yeah. we, try to, we try to show a little bit of love when we can, man. But, I appreciate uh, like that. Like I told man. Hash, whenever y'all get the project finished, just get the clean edits for me and send them oh, yeah. over. And I got it's pretty y'all much all clean, day. though. It ain't, it ain't real. He said ain't that y'all real. wasn't really cussing that much no more. No. Nah. So it ain't much to do there, so. That's easy breezy. Though. Yep. For sure. And then we'll even talk to you on the on the real FM radio uh interview some at some point too, man. So we'll take yeah, care man, of all that for you. Word up, man. Appreciate the love, man. Appreciate what you're doing, no doubt. For sure, man. Thank you again for taking time out. Thanks for being part of Book Nine and uh everybody else out there, man. I make sure y'all follow this cat right here. Show uh show. true true lyricist, man. He's holding it down for the junk. This is book nine of the Junction City thank Chronicles, you, you. and I'm Tone Capone, and uh, the webpage is right there. So just hit the webpage, follow along, and we'll be back with the next edition of the Junction City Chronicles. Peace out. Peace All out, right, man. Show. Thank you again, All right, bro. bro. All right, man. All right, be thanks. easy, man. You too, bro. Yep. yep. This is Tone Capone and DJ Spaceship. And Saturday nights from 10 to midnight, we bring you Waves Waves of of the Bay. Bay. Right here on WMNF 88.5 Tampa. With the hottest interviews, the hottest music. You can submit your music for the Tampa Bay Watch segment at wavesofthebayradio at gmail.com or follow us on all social media at Waves of the Bay. Every Saturday, 10 to 12, make sure you come and ride the wave. Yes, sir.